Welcome to the second episode of Fireside Chat with Volcasa. My name is Daniela, the president of Volcasa, and I'm so happy that we're keeping this momentum going and that wonderful people have been so nice to volunteer their time to this chat. With that being said, I'm so happy to have Carla Tanasha here alongside me, Volcasa's cultural affairs director. And on to our very special feature for today, we have Daniela de la Peña. Daniela de la Peña is a Toronto-based Filipina Canadian actress, singer, and creator, soon to be graduating from the Joint Theater and Drama Studies program at the University of Toronto and Sheridan College. Yes, represent. Yes. <laughs> Outside of her education, she's also been writing a new play with the Disconnected uh, Collective alongside Carlos Bulusan Theater. You can also spot Daniela in her first ever film that actually premiered on January 16th, and it's called Two for the Win by Hallmark. Daniela is also the events coordinator for UTM FSA, one of Volcasa's member schools. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> Welcome aboard, Daniela. How are you? I'm good. I wasn't expecting all that. She, she pulled out the whole hey, vibe. Okay. I, I pulled it from your page. So. Oh, I know. I, know. I, I, I had I to do my girl. research. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you for, for asking me to hop on this chat. Of course, of course. Yeah, we're so happy to have you. Um, this is going to be an interesting conversation. Um, but I just wanted to jump in and, you know, just really get things started. Um, so you are an emerging artist that has so much potential, and I'm sure you're going to do great things even more in the future. Um, but, you know, just tell us a little bit about how you got started with the performing arts. Like, how did you figure out that, oh, maybe I want to go into acting as a career? Uh, yeah, I, I'd say, like, there, there have been a lot of, there have been a collection of firsts um, throughout this whole experience. Like, when I was a little kid, my parents enrolled me in everything, as I feel like all Filipino parents do. They can't just, like, throw your kid in everything. Um, but one thing that really stuck with me was ballet as a kid when I was five. Then I stopped. And then um, my first time actually performing theater was in high school when I did Into the Woods as the Baker's Wife, which was so great. I loved it. Musical theater was so much fun. I have not touched it since. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, and I guess the other first I have um, was a commercial I did for Shoppers Drug Mart. It was for shampoo something like that so that was fun um but yeah I don't I don't know I've had a lot of um firsts but uh dipping into the performance the performance aspect of it um it's all quite new to me it's all quite new to me if I'm being honest so there's a lot of things that I'm still discovering so yeah <laughs> yeah that's so nice because I think the beauty of it is that it's a learning process and I, and I bet it's like such a learning curve every single time you like experience something new because I'm sure you've like kind of tap your toes into different things. Yeah. I've seen you do so many different things in such a short span of time. So like, I like, I like what you said there, like in the very beginning when you said like, there's been a collection of firsts because I think that's what it is as a growing emerging artist. Yeah, I, it's definitely been a learning a learning experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only been in the entertainment industry of, or officially working in the entertainment industry for about three years now. Wow. Um, and it's thankfully because my agent, um, she's really been putting me out there for different opportunities for commercial, for modeling, for, yeah. for music videos, for movies. Um, and it's weird. I'm like, I did not think that I was capable of any of, it, any of this, but she um, kind of just threw me in like one of those kids learning how to swim for the first time um but I'm very grateful for it because I'm learning many things that I didn't think I'd ever actually experience or mm -hmm. actually have the knowledge of at, at this at this time so that's amazing yeah. wow <laughs> <laughs> wow that is so wonderful it just like goes to show how we as people kind of uh, uplift each other right? Like there's so many possibilities um, with just meeting one person and it becomes a domino effect yeah. almost. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. That's amazing. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about 
you know, um, what have been the highlights of your career so far? You mentioned that you've only been in the business for three years officially. However, you know, you've been involved in a lot of stuff. Like, what, do, what can you say is like the proudest, I guess, moment in your career that kind of made you say like, oh, I think I've, I'm, I'm in the entertainment business now. Yeah, um, there's been, there's a couple. One really, really big one that Daniela mentioned was um, working with uh, the Arhalo sisters that I've met through school, uh, Christina and Marissa Arhalo. Uh, Christina, she's in my year, we're really good friends. We work together on a lot of things in school and outside of school. Um, so uh, working on this play, or so basically we're working on a play um, with Carlos Buloson Theater. It is a Filipino Toronto based theater company. Um, and never, ever, ever in my life have I ever thought that I would create a play, write a play um, for that matter, because I just didn't think I had it in me. Um, I have ideas. I'm a person who likes to word vomit out things, whether it's writing it out or typing it out. Um, but I just really didn't think that I had it in me, but it, it's not just me. It's also Marissa and Christina um, and Leon Ar Arias, the artistic director of Carlos Bulosan, um, who have been helping me on this journey. Um, and it's, that's really been a big one because especially with the context of the play, uh, it's about Filipina beauty standards within, um, within our, our world specifically in a, in a very Westernized sense. That's um, really interesting. And wow. yeah. I, I think so too. Hopefully other people think so too. And um, it, we're talking a lot about um, what it's like to be the daughter of an immigrant, to be to be an immigrant and uh, handle the beauty standards when it comes to being in a pageant, when it comes to choosing a dress for a debut, for a wedding, mm -hmm. um, but all specifically all under- right. <laughs> we you're hitting the points, you're hitting the spots. <laughs> right, right. Um, and and again, it, like it's really been a collective experience for Christina, Marissa and I, um, because Christina and Marissa um, are half Filipino and they have had their walks of life in terms of um, being a mixed race uh, mm. Filipina. So that's been really interesting to get their perspective and hear their ideas in, in this process. Um, so that's been one. Um, Another one. Oh, currently, or no, recently we wrapped up um, an audio series with Mina Lee Aquino and David Yee. Mina Lee Aquino is a Filipina Canadian director. I love her with all my heart. I love her. She's an inspiration with all the work that she has done. Um, and to be directed by her before I graduate from school has been huge. Yeah. Um, she, aside from being a Filipino, director she just has this poise and uh, bravery and uh, she's she's confident with everything that she does which I mm -hmm. find so inspiring and she has had a, a huge collective of firsts in terms of writing um anthropologies creating um Filipina plays and she's a three-time award-winning um Dora Maver Award for Outstanding Direction. She like she's done it all, so that's been really big uh, working with her and David Yee. David Yee is an amazing, amazing, amazing playwright um, that I really do admire. Um, like Danielle mentioned again, um, the Hallmark movie. The Hallmark movie was really fun because I've always wanted to be in a Hallmark movie. Um, I'm a sucker for the for the little cheesy Hallmark cookie cutter mm -hmm. Christmas movies. This one wasn't a Christmas movie, um, but low key I did. I just wrapped up a Christmas movie um, last month just as a background thing, but that was fun. And that should be coming out um, this 2021 Christmas season. Wow. So that's gonna be fun. Um, so Hallmark movies are really great, really, really cheesy. Um, but to follow up with the Hallmark movies, it's also allowed me to um, gain my first actor credit, so my first union credit. And that's kind of like your your um I'm officially a working actor now. So that's oh been gosh. that's been wow. really cool. Yeah, experience. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Have your you. own IMDB and everything. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. And I guess I like I I have I have to name drop it, but the Oprah's Bank account music video was really cool too. Um that was a really fun experience. Um being able to like see little Yachty, see all the behind the scenes, director X, Drake, 
Um, the baby wasn't there, but that's fine. <laughs> that, but that day was really fun. It was a really fun time for me. And to see me in make a little cameo in that music video was very surprising as well. So yeah, yeah. That's a lot. That's but, yeah. amazing. Like these accomplishments and these involvements in different, like different sectors to different things all before you finish undergrad. Like yeah. that, wow. <laughs> try. That's so amazing. Hard. amazing. And yeah. what I love about what you do, especially, is that you make sure that everything is super intentional and that your culture, your cultural identity is almost always integrated with what you do right yeah so. yeah like it's it's something that I've grown up with all my life yep. it's something that I feel like I I need to or that I want to um take with me throughout my throughout my career throughout my entertainment uh career my artistic career it has to be highlighted mm -hmm. it has to be highlighted yeah. yeah um I know that you mentioned earlier that your agency has been helping you a lot, kind of putting you into different things, different types of experiences. And we're wondering how your agency has helped you with your growth and development, especially that miracle management has this reinforcement and emphasis on inclusivity and diversity. Yeah, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Miracle is actually half Filipina herself. And yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know this. Um, I didn't know this when I first like started doing research about her. When I first came across her Instagram page, I had no idea. Um, I did my research and I found out that she was half Filipina. Um, and that was a big factor for me um, when it came to signing up for the agency. Uh, I wanna make sure that whoever I'm working with, whoever I'm partnered with is going to advocate for me mm. or rather advocate the same morals and intentions that I have for myself into the industry, into the way that I want to present myself to casting directors, to directors, whoever. Um, so that was a really big, that was a really big deal for me when I came to signing up with Miracle. Um, but I think what's, what's very unique about her management is that, again, as, as you mentioned, she highlights um, diversity. She highlights uh, BIPOC artists, which mm -hmm. I feel like not a lot of agencies yes. tend to do. And mm -hmm. this is the thing, I'm, I'm very young, I'm very new to the industry, but I've also done my research and I feel as if it's, it's not as common for agencies to highlight, um, to highlight racialized my, minority figures. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously we're living in a time where things are really moving fast things are are changing for the better mm -hmm. um but it's it's a bit slow everything everything's a bit slow but it, it's slowly but surely piecing together and i feel like with miracle and her management she's she's helping that racialized minoritized community to actually get their faces on screen whether it's it's your laptop screen your tv screen big movie screens she's giving racial uh those who are um BIPOC identifying to represent those who feel like they've lost their voice in the past year mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah that, that's something I really really do respect um about the agency yeah a hundred percent and it's really important especially for um up-and-coming artists especially you know um BIPOC artists to for their voices to be amplified the fact that like you were able to find an agency that aligns with your values and your morals, I think that's even a cherry on top because yes. I'm, I'm sure you love working yes. with Miracle yes. Management. I almost feel like I, I don't see it as work from you. Like I, I feel like you enjoy every single thing that's that Miracle Management has helped you um, yes. been involved with. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I, um, uh, the past the past year has been difficult considering the pandemic but um every time I get an audition I get very very excited because mm -hmm. that it's it's a new opportunity to grow to get myself out there but also a new opportunity for casting directors um to see what I've got to see what I have to offer um and again it's been difficult with the pandemic but it I think the 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 pandemics allowed me to appreciate these opportunities more and to really just 
let myself have fun with it and let me uh, play play with our auditions artistically mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's it's a great opportunity yeah that's so wonderful that even amidst the pandemic you were still able to access these things obviously with the help of your um, for, of your agency but the fact that you were still making moves you were still involved in a lot of different things I was surprised too if I'm being yeah. honest <laughs> you were just awesome awesome <laughs> so on that note how important do you think media representation is and do you think there is a growing representation and diversity um, in the media particularly Filipino artists It's very important, obviously. It's very, very important. Um, this is something that my friends and I at school within um, my theater and drama st study studies program, um, it's been something that we've been trying to work on, especially because so many theater programs right now, um, the professionals teaching the programs tend to be westernized. Mm -hmm. um, there are not many BIPOC professional teachers. Um, and it's just a matter of time for all of that to change so that um, it's difficult. It's, it's a difficult topic to, to talk about just because, again, times are changing. We do see improvements. But at the same time, it gets a little tricky at times to actually mm -hmm. um, dig into the deep, dark, scary details yeah. of it all. Um, but yeah, I would say representation is definitely very important. Um, considering the fact that like, like you hear the stories when you were a little girl, there weren't many people that many female actors that looked like you. Mm -hmm. The only people that I actually like looked up to was, um, Brenda Song, London yes. Tipton. And everyone, when I was a kid, everyone was like, oh, you look exactly like London Tipton. And then like, as I got older, I was like, do I though? Do I, maybe I act a little like London, like London Tipton, but I don't, now that I look at it, I'm like, I don't think I look like her. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it's also like looking at characters like Mulan, looking at um, icon figures like Leia Salonga. It, it was such a limited bubble. It was such a limited bubble. Okay. So moving, moving forward, obviously, or I personally want to make sure that kids who are like, who were watching like princess movies watching kids movies they're able to like look up on their screens and be like oh my god i look like her she, like mm -hmm. we're the same we're the same shade uh she speaks the same language as me mm -hmm. she grew up just like me with um filipino immigrant parents that 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 moment of like wow she's just like me or yeah. he's just like me they're just like me it's such a hard-hitting moment that i really feel produces so much inspiration at such a young age too um and from there I don't know I feel like or at least for me when I was inspired as a little kid it was able to really push me move forward um and inspire me throughout the coming years mm -hmm. and here we are so representation is important yeah it does matter it does matter for sure and I like that you pointed out that growing up you were you were seen as someone who looks like Brenda Song. And that's really interesting to actually talk about because it's not that we like that you couldn't have looked or resembled her, not necessarily that, but to me, how I think about it is that she was just the closest possible Asian figure that people yeah. could think of, right? Yeah. And that's why that's all they could say because we didn't have that representation. It's like, even though there is a significant population of like Filipino uh, communities throughout North America, we are still quite invisible in, in yeah. that sense. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a work in progress for sure. There has been growth and development. And like yeah. you said, like it, it does matter. And it's amazing to have seen like even the directors you have worked with, Carlos Bulosa yeah. and yeah. Nina Lee, you know, these are amazing characters that we're able to look up to now and I hope that continues to progress and I hope that there comes a day where it's just like it's not something that we talk about yeah. anymore in in like a in like a super this bizarre is sense yeah, yeah like yeah, in a bizarre yeah. sense I I hope that it comes more normative in in that way you know just be like yeah she's a director 
as opposed to she's a Filipina director. Exactly. Obviously, it's important to have that. It's then, important but, to have that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, that just that normalcy. You know, it was really interesting that you said, you know, something about Brenda Song. And I remember as a kid, I really liked Vanessa Hudgens on High School Musical. Yeah. But the thing is, she p- was playing a Mexican girl instead of a Filipino. And that's why, you know, I was like, oh, this girl looks like me, but yeah. I'm not sure if she's Filipina. So that yeah. for me, it was kind of like a little tragic that she yeah. had to adjust her role you know, her entire personality just to fit into this role. So I'm yeah. kind of curious about like, you know, um, it's probably, it probably doesn't happen as much anymore, but do you feel like, um, you know, actors are kind of pigeonholed into fitting a specific, you know, role? Um, and as a follow-up questions to that, um, you know, are you, can you see yourself as like the next Vanessa Hudgens for some kids? And what, what would that dream role be? I know you're working on your play and it's a play that will really resonate with a lot of Filipina Canadians, but you know, how can you see yourself as someone who would really inspire younger kids to go into performing arts? But in terms of kids, I love kids. I love kids. My, my ultimate, ultimate dream, not this isn't a role, my ultimate, ultimate dream is to open up um, a theater company specifically for young Southeast Asians. Wow. Um, because that's like, that's a big spectrum. And like, this is the thing, like, like when, when you're a young Filipina kid or like any kind of Southeast Asian, your parents automatically like put you into like piano lessons, any kind of like instrument lessons, whatever. Um, but man, like theater is so darn fun. It's so fun. And you like, you get to be creative, you get to like be quirky and it's such a great outlet. So, mm-hmm. and I, I'm, I feel like a bunch of my kids when uh, a bunch of my kids, I have no kids. I have no kids. I oh didn't God. know that, Danielle. <laughs> Ooh, Mom and dad, I have no kids. <laughs> A bunch of my friends when they were kids um, who are in my my theater program, a bunch of them went to like like theater camps. And I'm like, why didn't I get to go to theater camp? Yeah. It's because my parents probably didn't know it was the thing. Actually, fun fact, my mom tried um, putting me into some sort of commercial when I was three. I did not like it. So my mom just stopped. Mm. Um, so that was that was the start and end or start and pause of my pause um, for sure <laughs> yeah of my acting career um which which I find kind of funny but um oh god what was the initial thing? oh for my uh, in terms of the Vanessa Hudgens thing uh it what I find interesting is that I didn't know about the the Mexican being portrayed as a Mexican uh female until maybe a couple of years ago but the same thing goes for Brenda Song Brenda Song or London Tipton specifically uh, I don't think any actual ethnicity was actually addressed to her on the TV show. Yeah. Um, it's just a generalization of Asians, which is like, it's interesting. And I had this conversation with a couple of people um, through a clubhouse conversation um, about Crazy Rich Asians. I love Crazy Rich Asians. A role on any of the Crazy Rich Asians movies is definitely my dream role. I've, I have texted my agent and been like hey are there any like castings for the next movie she's like I don't know but we'll see I don't even know if I don't know if like I I'm qualified to do so just because of like union stuff because like I only have one one credit but um I think that'd be cool but in terms of her being in one of my favorite childhood movies I would love to be um that kind of um inspiration for Mm -hmm. kids um yeah, but as for my dream roles, I'm looking over there because I have a bunch of these kinds of papers up on my wall. Um, one of them says like your wildest dreams. So one of them is Crazy Rich Asians. Another one, I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, the TV show, the Christmas TV show on Netflix, Dash and Lily. I feel no, like I've no. seen that. Briefly. I think I've seen it on my recommendation. Okay, and I, yeah, probably, right? I, I watch. I watch it so many times over the holiday <laughs> break because I really love. It. but like anything cheesy um rom-com um kind of movie in that sense um I'm a sucker for so I would love to take on something like that 
Um, another one, Disney Princess. Obviously, a Disney Princess is up there. Oh. I recently I recently started um, voiceover classes at school with a woman named Ellie Ray. Genius woman, a genius genius woman. Um, and it's really gotten me into into thinking. Oh my gosh, like voiceover is so fun, it, and, but yeah. it's also very athletic, and it also sometimes causes you to um, be in your closet to make sure there's no echoes in the room and um, uh, make sure that the recording goes smoothly. But uh, Disney Princess is definitely up there in, in, in an animated movie. Um, and then, uh, I don't know. I have another one. Wait, 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 wait. I have another one that I really, really want to say. Wait. Uh, oh, um, Silk. But I know Silk. Uh, Silk from the Marvel Universe, but I know she's a Korean American um, character. So, and I think they've already started to do casting for for the mm. Silk comic movies. Um, so that's kind of out of the bag, but it's fine. It's fine. But as for uh, for theater, I would. This isn't necessarily like a a, a dream role, but rather a dream play. I would love to do. Um, Alice Birch's revolt. She said revolt again. Um, just beautiful. I'm sorry. That is my dog. If you can hear her. Um, Bella. <laughs> she's just looking out the window. Um, it is a beautiful piece. Um, a beautiful feminist piece, but yeah, we'd love to do Alice Birch's revolt. She said revolt again. And, uh, Kat Sandler's mustard. It's about, um, having an imaginary friend, um, at the age of 16 and then, um, the 16 year old's mother, starts to go through a divorce and she ends up seeing Mustard, the imaginary friend. And she's like, why am I seeing my daughter's imaginary friend? Um, so those are two dream plays that I would love to tackle one day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that's that, was, that was a very long answer. There's a <laughs> lot. No, that's an extensive list. And what I love about that is that you identified, you know, your dream roles, but then you've also touched on the community aspect of it and really emphasized how important it is for representation to happen but not only representation but also opening the gates i guess for other bipoc folks to mm -hmm. to really get into the performing arts industry um i don't know if it's the same for you but i guess in a stereotypical kind of like asian household um they would probably say that performing arts is a hard um, industry to get into because yeah. it's not a you know it's not a job like nursing where you would go to nursing school and then you'd be funneled into the medical system right mm -hmm. um, so have you ever experienced kind of like you know hearing some doubts from your relatives about <laughs> oh like how come you're not an accountant or <laughs> how come you know um, you're choosing to take this path. Um, and I guess like another follow-up question for that would be um, what other barriers apart from, you know, those structural barriers can you see in the performing arts industry? And how does that hold us back as BIPOC folks from truly engaging and showcasing what we can offer to the world? Yes, that's a loaded question. That's loaded. a loaded question. <laughs> but, um, it's funny because personally, um, my parent my parents have been super super great about about all of this. About they're very very supportive about um, the career path um, that I've chosen for myself. Um, oh wow! And they they really do believe in me. At least I think they do. Um, and yeah. I I think I think my um, my upbringing has been different in comparison to others because I've never gotten the whole you should be a nurse speech, you should be an accountant speech. Back in high school, I did consider architecture. My dad was very excited because he's an engineer. Um, oh. And then last minute in like halfway through grade 12, I was like, I think I'm going to audition for theater school. And I think yeah. I already did. <laughs> and, and, and I think I already did it. No, no, no. Like they, they knew, they knew. Um, but I never got that spiel. Um, and I think, I think it's also because they put me in sing lessons, dance lessons, piano lessons, um, whatever kind of performance lessons back when I was a kid. So this is kind of, uh, I, I guess this is all kind of accidentally lined up for me. Um, and also throughout my life, it's, it's very weird, but like back in the Philippines, 
um, when I'd come, when I'd go visit my my relatives, they'd be like, Daniela, magartista ka, mag magartista ka dito sa Pilipinas, and I'm like, yeah, sure. And now I look back and I'm like, I think I'll stay in Canada. I'm okay with that. Um, but it's it's something that's I've I've only recently realized that um, be be an artist, be an actor has been ringing in my ears as a joke. <laughs> But now I've actually made a career out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I guess I, I'm, I'm very, very grateful that my family, my friends um, that I've grown up with have been so supportive. I've never had a, a, a doubt from any of my relatives, I think. They've just been like, how's it going? Like, um, like what are you doing now? Well, like, are you shooting anything? They're constantly, they constantly want to be updated, which I, which I find really surprising but also very heartwarming that is so wonderful to hear <laughs> that <Yeah>. is so <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and again this just goes to show like um you know the things that you do as a kid the the programs that you're involved in like you know it does have a domino effect that's what we always say is community yeah. is so so important yeah. Um, that is so yeah, that is so amazing and just really refreshing to hear. I mean, I feel like I felt supported just by you talking about your family's support and your relatives' support and their yeah. follow-ups. I just yeah. felt like so empowered by that. Yeah. yeah. I just <laughs> so it's, I don't know. I think I think it's because again, my parents have not been like the traditional like be a nurse. Be, they're, they're, don't get me wrong, they're very strict. They're very mm -hmm. they're like uh, but uh I think I think it's also helped that like my sister um, for so many years, like she was a competitive gymnast. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's not, that's not very common. It's not, and she was, she was also a very, very good gymnast. She, she won many provincial really? titles. Yeah. Um, she got first place in California. She got, I don't know, in, in a bunch of places. Um, Your genes. It's, Your genes it's, it's, it's something, <laughs> who knows, who knows? But uh, we, we've just, our family has just not um, functioned in the stereotypical way that some people may assume every Filipino mm -hmm, family mm -hmm. would function. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's so amazing. And I know that we've touched on and you gave us a lot of insight already with regards to your experiences in the arts and entertainment industry so far. And it's been really amazing to hear your experiences, your, your, your goals, your vision for yourself. So I wanted to touch on your involvement with UTM FSA and how how do you think that sense of community is um, important in your development as as a student as an academic as a professional yeah uh, it's funny because um this this was my first I heard about um UTM FSA last year um but I knew for a fact that I would not be able to join because um with my program we have uh, U of T classes Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we have Sheridan classes, so our theater acting classes Tuesday, Thursdays, and then we have rehearsals Monday through Thursday, six to ten, and that's how Ooh. and that's how that's how it would be in in person in person. Yeah. So, strangely enough, thanks to the thanks to the pandemic, I was able to give this a shot and be like, hey, like I feel like I, I don't know many like. Filipinos, Filipinas, Philippine exes on campus. Mm -hmm. Why not give this a shot? I was I was also very nervous for that um, audition, for that interview um, with UTM FSA when when I applied. Um, so far, the experience has been so great. I've I've made friends who I I haven't met yet, which is really weird. Yeah. And like maybe I'll meet them like once this pandemic's over. But like I'll have already graduated, so I guess I'll just visit one time. Um, but it's fun because like they're really supportive, but it, it's great to have a community that understands um, your upbringing and some like inside jokes, inside Filipino jokes, whatever. Um, but the actual association in general has been great because we've been able to find ways to connect the Philippine X community at school, despite being so disconnected mm -hmm. from the world physically and not being able to do um, in-person events I know and again this like this was my first year this will be my last unfortunately mm -hmm. um joining UTM FSA but last year they had something uh something uh an event similar to a potluck 
and mm. they said that that was really successful and a lot of people liked it and it wasn't even just philippine exes on campus a lot of people kind of just came in and they they were able to um enjoy filipino food um and apparently they had to keep going to starbucks to buy more rice maybe i'm exposing them but they ran out of rice that's how that's how like um rice yeah because, be, they i don't know or no no not starbucks <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that was available. And at, 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 at like the the sushi place on. Okay, on okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. But <laughs> at least in my mind. Um, but yeah, it, it was so successful that they ran out of rice. Um, and I'm like, man, I wish I could have gone to one yeah. of those events. But obviously, like rehearsals and school, it like gets super busy. Yeah. But overall, like, it's been a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I've made great friends that I get to hang out with over discord every now and then and I'm sure that sense of community has just been super strengthened throughout the pandemic and the fact that I'm sure you were able to just connect with a lot of different people like you already mentioned yeah. you were able to connect and talk to different people that you probably would have not have the chance exactly, to exactly. had it so be in person because you would have been busy with rehearsals and school exactly so it's 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 nice it's because as much as i i love my friends in my program there's only 19 of us in my year we are together 24 7 24 7 yeah and like and we all take the same drama classes we yeah. all take the same english classes yeah. and, th and that's the utm side with sheridan mm. it's literally only 19 of us mm. that see one another um and again, I love them to death. I think they are talented as hell. I mm -hmm. wish them all the best in the real world. World, um, but it it was really great to connect with with more Philippine exes on campus, um, and yeah, awesome! Wow, that's really great to hear. <laughs> and our concluding question for today is that: Do you have any pieces of advice to aspiring artists, especially young and up and coming ones? Yeah, um, this is something that I've been telling myself since high school, um, and that's why I overflowed with clubs and stuff. But um, take every opportunity that you can get, Facts. even the ones that are going to be free. It's 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 harder now during the pandemic, but even if you have to do those free photo shoots just to build up your portfolio, um, if you if you want to be an assistant on set and do it for free to to like absorb all the knowledge yes. absorb everything that's happening take that opportunity because every, every little small side job that i've done has allowed me to to build up so much knowledge like and like um i guess an on-set glossary of of how be the behind the scenes work mm -hmm. um and like there's something about missing about rejecting an, an opportunity that really sits weird with me because it, it's always that what if what if yeah. I did it what if I didn't like what like what if I didn't apply to miracle management back in second year what if um I didn't uh reach out to or what if I didn't meet uh Leon Arias the artistic director of Carlos mm -hmm. Blossom and Peter um just so much so many of those what ifs and those hesitations I hate living in those. I hate living in those. I'd rather just jump the gun and give it a shot. So mm -hmm. take every opportunity that you can get. I highly recommend it. You won't regret it. The only thing you will regret, reg what? Reg what? Regret is, <laughs> is not taking that opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is so, so important. <laughs> and can I add to that? Because I observed earlier that um, after like, big opportunities that you were able to take on you didn't think that you could do it or you didn't think you were cut out for it and I just wanted to add that you're bigger than you think you are you know like and and that applies not only to you but I think for everyone yeah just add on to yeah. the pieces of advice you just mentioned like you are way more capable and you don't know up until you're there too like what you said just touching yeah. on, touching back on that um availing every opportunity you get yeah. you really don't know where it could take you yeah yeah like I I wouldn't I wouldn't ever think that I could ever do an audio series and here I am doing it for school um it's called the Cecil Hotel yes get your tickets yes. it's so, it's so good I, 
I highly recommend. There's also a Netflix series. So if you want a little sneak peek of that, um, check that out. Um, but you you really don't know because when I was when I was on set for like my one two liner for the Hallmark movie, I was like, oh my God, I am I am trust like there are professionals in this room that trust and understand that I know what I'm doing. And I'm like, do I know what I'm doing? And and it's and it's not until it's all executed um, that you actually understand. I can do this. I can I can move forward. I can actually make a career with this, um, with my with my talents. And I'm going to say talents because yes. I need to I need to fun. accept yeah. and just and just say it. Yeah, 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 and own it. Yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that you recognize your talents, your capabilities, because it's so important to just literally be able to look at yourself in the mirror and like what you do and love yourself and be confident yeah. in, in your craft. So, but wow, it's, so it's, inspiring. It's, yeah. It's, wow. it's so hard to do that though. Like you, yes. it, it takes a long, it takes time for of, sure. Yeah. 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 But you're there, you're getting there. You're so talented I, I look up to you every time I see you like do these things. I'm just like, share, share, share. Like, 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 love, love, love. Come and come and come. Oh, thank you. I no, like, I'm not even joking. Like, I love what you do. And I love that you, I love your drive, your dedication, your commitment, your talent. And, uh, and on top of that, you're an awesome person. So you're an awesome <laughs> person. And so are you, Carla. Well, you know what, Daniela, it all started from coach. It all started at Coach. Shout, coach out, shout out Coach TPO for connecting <laughs> the two Danielas in this call because if it weren't for that workplace, I we couldn't have, right. we couldn't have friends. Like what? Shout out, shout out to Tim, shout out to Anthony. Shout out to Tim, Byron. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead. so dead. That's so funny. I'm so dead. When I came back onto the next summer, you were in the Philippines at the time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so when I was introducing myself to uh, just several people that I hadn't met before, they were like, oh, there's another Daniela. Um, she's in the Philippines, though. And I'm like, really? She's Daniela and she's Filipino? Yeah. You know? you know? <laughs> so when you came back, like, I was really excited to meet you and everything. So, yeah, amazing. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really nice to have you on board and just for you to share all your experiences, all your advice. And I hope that the audience or the people that come to watch this are able to extract the same inspiration that me and Carla got. So thank you. Thank you so much again. Thank you for, thank for you. asking me. Thank you so much, Carla and Daniela. This was, this was really fun.